In this Roblox tutorial, I am showing you how to build a simulator map. I will increase the speed of this video in some parts so it's not too long. I am just starting with a blank base plate. And let's save it to Roblox right away before I forget. Okay, first I'm going to change the color of the base plate to a bright green. And also I will change the material to grass. Think about your design and the colors you are going to use. Did you know kids are attracted to bright colors? Look at tapping simulator, bright orange, bright green. There is a science behind why they use these specific colors you know. My grass needs to be brighter. Okay, to speed up the map building, I'm going to use free items where I can. I am adding walls here. In my opinion, some of these free items are great. And save heaps of time. You can design your own walls if you like. I would rather just modify something, by changing colors. Or change the scale, and then add more to it if I need to. Here, I am just checking quickly to see if these walls have any scripts. If they do, I am deleting the scripts. The reason I do that, is the scripts may have malicious code in them, or things that will slow down your game. For these walls, I'm going to remove the shadows. And change the color and scale, so that it fits my base plate. Remembering I said I need to have bright colors for kids. So, I am checking against the tapping simulator game to make sure I get it bright enough. Unless you have your own design ideas in your head or graphic design to look at. It's a good idea to model off another successful game. I am not copying, rather I am using what they did great. And implementing that in my game. Here they nailed the colors. So I am choosing similar shades of orange and green. I doubt they are exactly the same. It's starting to look pretty good. And you can see how much faster it is using free items. Okay, I see a lot of the Roblox simulator games use these paths. We are not reinventing the wheel here. So guess what? I am using paths too. Again you can create your own part here for your path. I'm going to use the free item though, so I can get the game working as soon as possible. While I am doing this, you will see me create a new folder for each thing. Such as the map, and these paths. Etc it just cleans up the workspace a bit to keep things organized. Okay so I have one done. Now I will just duplicate this part to make more. And move into position using the move tool, or position settings. You can see me rotating these here using the rotate tool, and positioning them in place. I will speed the video up until these are done. Okay, let's check our to-do list. To see what else I need to add. I need 4 shops, leaderboard, eggs and a teleport. Okay, I'm just going to check the free items. And later when the game coding is completed, I might come back and replace these shops or build something better. Anything will do for now. Actually, this blue shop ring is perfect. It even has a script in it, that pops up the GUI when the player touches it. So half our work is done here already. Time saved in development is always a good thing. My pro tip for you today is, in the beginning stages of your game development, don't waste too much time on the design. Instead, just get some things on your map like this. You can change and swap these things later. The priority for your game development is actually the development part. So focus on getting things working first, then later you can tweak the design and items.
During the development stages, ask yourself these questions. What is the gameplay like? Is it addictive? Does it function as expected? How can you improve the functionality to increase the user experience? That will help you to create a good game. Because you are thinking about the user experience, and not just creating random things that don't make sense. For example, in Popcorn Simulator the player eats popcorn, and then trades their empty box in for coins. It doesn't make sense, and maybe doesn't matter. However, with a little thought, perhaps the developer could have come up with something better. Our map's looking good, stick around. Soon I am going to add a checkered pattern to the floor. First, I am going to add some trees and rocks. I might swap these later, it just makes it feel completed. With the trees, noticed I choose the bright green ones. Sticking with our bright for kids idea. Okay, just going to speed it up a bit. Let's get to the checkered floor. So, for this checkered floor, just search for a checkered pattern and copy the URL for it. Click the plus sign on your base plate and add a texture to it. Paste the URL in for the checkered pattern. I changed the studs per tile to 100. And I changed the transparency to 0.89. Actually, I'm going to try this black and white checkered pattern. That's looking really good. That's our simulator map completed, let's check our list. In the next video I am adding GUIs for all of these. I think our simulator map looks very good. And is a good start to our game. I think, our grass could be a little brighter, tell me what you think in the comments. This is the god of coding at Epic Blocks to signing off, see you in the next one.